Welcome to segment two of Citizens Forum, um, being filmed on Tuesday, August the 18th. This is the Walt and Jack show. Um, so Walt, I'll start off with a... Um, on Thursday, August the 27th at Victoria City Hall at 7 p.m. And it'll probably run for a couple of hours, so you don't have to come on time if you're interested. But Thursday, August the tw August 27th at about 7 o'clock, probably running till 8 or 9, it's going to be a public hearing for the BOSA development at the St. Andrew's School site. And St. Andrew's School is the old private school that's at the corner of Pandora and Vancouver. People probably drive by it all the time. I live close to the neighborhood. And that open field, you know, it, it's, it's, it's kind of one of the few open spaces in a fairly highly developed neighborhood. And it's a big loss to the neighborhood if that entire area is covered by a development, which is the current plan. Uh, from BOSA. And um, City Council is going to decide either on the 27th or shortly thereafter um, what to do. And it really raises to me, it, and they want people to come out. Um, City Council may not want people to come out, but the neighbors want people to come out. And if you go to a website called MasonStreetFarm.com, that's Mason Street is spelled S T R E E T, the whole word masonstreetfarm.com they've got quite a quite a discussion about it the mason street farm is an urban farm right across the street from where this development is going to be uh, unfortunately the development is it, it, there's a lot of bad things about it one of the worst is that it's going to turn a very quiet street which is right next to mason street farm into a very busy thoroughfare and it really raises the question do we want our cities futures to be controlled by the people who live here, namely us, the citizens, or should, should our futures be controlled by developers who come in with no plan in place except the maximization of their profit? That's all they care about. And I mean, I just got back from Vancouver and, and you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a mess over there in terms of just, you know, the loss of community, the loss of neighborhoods, and of course the complicity of the media and the complicity of the politicians. So um, the, the neighbors are asking people to come out on Thursday, August the 27th to Victoria City Hall and um, participate. Check out the website, masonstreetfarm.com, and really give a thought to this idea of how should our city's futures be designed by us who live here and want community and neighborhoods for our families and children and ourselves or by developers from out of the city who really are in it only for profit and <clears throat> i don't know the whole nature of the development and how much uh, low-income housing is going to be involved in this development and you know what's the configuration of the land and all that but there seems to be tends to be a trend towards kind of a privatization of public spaces for profit uh, and you'll find a large retail developments do it for sure where they just take uh, like the uptown mall they they take you know inside that mall and all in those stores you're standing on private land there's a, you know, if you wanted to go and demonstrate your disapproval or something, uh, they can throw you off that uh, out of those areas. Yeah. So we lose more and more of that. And as you lose that, you lose that interaction too with the, with your neighbors that you normally would get. Also, the stratification issues because rich people are in shopping malls, poor people don't have any money to spend. So, you know, you don't find that the same mix of the public meeting each other in a more an accidental way. And on and on it goes uh, of us not knowing our neighbors. And there's always that model towards uh, disenfranchising us from our decision making in the city, for instance, where, you know, decisions appear to be being made. Oh, they're invited us to a public hearing. Do I think that the, the 
their minds are not fully made up and they already have a plan and this is a just a charade I think it's a good possibility yeah. because I really don't find that there's any real meaningful public participation in these sort of events so put it all together and you end up losing another big open area of the city to a large development yeah and you know the, the neighborhood is not opposed to a development but they are opposed to a development that gives BOSA everything they want and gives BOSA maximum profit yeah. and you know is is the next step in the um, corporatization of, of another yeah. neighborhood. It's Thursday, August the 27th, 7 p.m. at um, Victoria City Hall. There was a letter to the editor in the um, Times columnist several days ago. Um, it was about genetically engineered foods, or as I prefer to call them, genetically contaminated foods. And it basically, the information in the letter was completely false. It was just somebody writing false information. I don't know if they knew it was false, but it was false about genetically engineered foods, which is a, which is a pretty big issue. And I've noticed this in the Times columnist over the months and years, that they will very often use the letter to the editor's column to put out false information to people quite I, I think it's quite deliberate maybe it isn't but it seemed because why would you why wouldn't you just get back to the letter writer and say no I mean this is factually incorrect but instead they print it and people read it now in today's TC they they had a, a kind of rebuttal to that um, but you know, the whole issue of, of genetically contaminated foods, it's, in my opinion, and the opinion of many scientists, the opinion of most people, a huge problem. Quite possibly uh, poisoning us, um, quite definitely contaminating our environment, and yet the weeks and months and years go by, and it's never, simply never mentioned in the media. And that's how the media operates because Monsanto and, and the big players in this are, are the controllers of the media. They don't want the public involved, so they, the media just dampens down the story. They give us trivia and nonsense all the time, but the important issues they just don't tell us about. Yeah, and the editors tend to do that, I find, in other issues where uh, somebody might be a little more plain spoken about promoting some agenda and they like that agenda and they allow that letter to be placed there and even though it's factually incorrect and I did notice those letters you were speaking of and they were equating uh, how we use different plants to, for cross-pollination and things of that nature and they were equating that to being genetically modified. Yeah, so they were saying this is nothing new, we've been doing it yeah. for thousands of years, which is an outright I would say an outright well it, it isn't true but but it causes a little bit of confusion a little bit of uh, you know bias one way and confuses the public and those who want genetically modified food well guess what it weakens the opposition and that's I think that's what it's all about yeah. and you know you you've often talked about our public health officials and and how they will not speak the truth about the issue of electromagnetic radiation, cell yeah. phones, um, smart meters, and all of that. But they also, where, where are our public health officials on the issue of genetically engineered foods? I mean, this is a public health issue, yeah. but we never hear about them from. Who, who do our public health officials work for, if, if not us? Well, I believe that they work for corporations. Uh, I think that they're there to make sure real change doesn't happen. They're the buffer between us and, and the corporations. Um, only common sense would tell you to take all sorts of steps to protect your health and public health and a whole range of health threats that the, health, that the, that the medical health officer does not address. And, and the strangeness of it is like we, there was a case where some drug that's out on the market now um, some chemical recreational drug that's been killing a lot of people 
and um, they don't seem to have a lot of problem with that. They're, they're, you know, they really aren't harshly criticizing that. And you really think, well, this is a place where the health officers can really step in and say, do not purchase this drug, it's too dangerous. Yeah. And the issues of homelessness and poverty. Yeah. I mean, there's no question that one of the greatest contributors to ill health is poverty. Never mind homelessness, yeah. but just being poorer. And yet our public health officials don't speak out on that either. Yeah. And they should be screaming at the top of their lungs that we've got to reduce the income inequality in our country, but they're silent. Instead, they talk about smoking over and over and over yeah. again. I mean, yes, smoking is a huge problem, but, but that's being beaten. We're winning that one. But that, it seems to be the only issue they're allowed to speak on because all the other issues, genetically engineered foods, poverty, um, Christy Clark's new rules about higher highway speeds, which, which are a game the cause of accidents. Yeah. It's like our public health officials are silent. Well, they refuse to ban talking on cell phones. Uh, particularly, they, they're promoting wireless, tech, uh, wireless technology, hands-free technology in cars, when all the evidence shows that that's even more dangerous. It's causing even more accidents, Jack. Wire, the the hands-free. Hands-free. Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't seem to matter. Uh, the public doesn't understand the technology, doesn't understand the impact on the brain. Uh, they can get away with this, this you know, this uh, distortion of reality. And it's exactly what the corporate world wants to hear. So I'm firmly in the camp of saying the public health officers, I won't call them public relations officers, but they are in many ways, are not working for us. They're buffers. They're, they're making sure that citizens cannot really get a change done because they stand in the way. And you know, it, it seems to be the truth now of virtually every part of officialdom in our society has been corrupted. Yeah. The union leadership is, is not there for us. Uh, our public health officials, our politicians, yeah. the media. I mean, where do we turn? When, when, you know, there's so much wrong. Well, there's small things, isn't there? I mean, that's the thing is that I don't ever want to throw my hands up. But there are things that we can do, and there are good things that are happening. Um, we, we've stirred the conversation a little bit back towards the election because Mehdi Najari, who was here earlier, raised so many great points. But the one, th one thing that, something good that we can do is the elect somebody, some people that are good for us. And uh, I, I really think that's important that the old status quo stuff does not work anymore. Uh, and far as I'm concerned, if you look at the collaboration between the NDP federally and the Conservatives has been there for a lot of years, uh, we can make a big change here in Victoria just simply by electing some green <laughs> candidates and, and you get some fresh eyes on these problems. Now, there are good things we can do, and, and, and I think the public has to step up and make some decisions like that and not accept the, this old status quo stuff. I mean, the elections in, in the recent municipal elections were generally good here in our area, and I think we got more progressive people in, but we have to take it even further. The public has to get engaged and make these changes. Yeah. Uh it's, it's so difficult because people do work hard. I mean, thousands yeah. and really millions of Canadians work hard on a lot of issues, but we're always kind of at the bottom trying to push up against this, just this corrupt officialdom that, that rules over us. We've got to break through it. Yeah, I would also like to see some more Greens elected. Yeah. They deserve to be elected. They're getting the votes. Yeah. Our voting system doesn't give them the seats, which is, which is another I mean, they're being kept, being kept out of the debates, which is, is totally unfair. And if the, if, if the NDP were truly concerned about democracy, they'd say we're not going into these national debates without the Green Party. They deserve to be there. Democracy needs the Greens to be there. And I think, Jack, it's going to be a big backfire for the, the NDP to turn their backs on the Greens that way. They're, they're fellow travelers in so many ways. Uh, and, and to look at them as being competitors 
and, and taking up some political ground is very small-minded at this, at this stage. And we have to get rid of Stephen Harper. That's the last thing i got to say today. <laughs> Walter, thank you very much. You're welcome. And thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.